Of all the ways to have two commanders in the command zone, choose a background as the most unique, and then you can choose a non-creature card as a commander. They often represent unique commander decks, or more affordable alternate takes on more exclusive strategies. But these enchantments don't actually do anything unless your commander is in play, which changes how you evaluate your choice of partners. Today, let's talk about some of the best practices and what to look for when choosing a background. First, you always want to choose a background that gives you a second color. Even though there are a lot of monocolored pairings that have a lot of extra synergy, that increased synergy in the command zone comes at the cost of a smaller toolbox for your 98. If these were ordinary partner pairings and both commanders could still function on their own, it might be a different story. But since the enchantment does nothing without your main commander, picking a monocolored pair puts all your eggs into one basket while limiting your range of tools to protect and interact with that basket. Instead, your background should also fill a hole in your commander's game plan, because if it's only doing what your main commander does, and only does it when your main commander is in play, then they're not actually adding anything to that discussion. Halson can make your existing tokens bigger, and his most popular background, Inspiring Leader, does the same, but only ever when Halson is in play, so it isn't actually doing anything that we weren't already doing. What's missing from Halson's game plan is a way to make those tokens, and Veteran Soldier fills that role much better than Inspiring Leader does, in the same colors and for less mana. Karlak gives your board extra combats, which do the most work when you build wide, and favors creatures with abilities that trigger in combat. What's missing from this plan is a large number of creatures with abilities that trigger in combat, so Feywild Visitor is a much better choice of background than her current most popular pairing, Sword Coast Sailor, which, in the same colors, only gives an attack trigger to Karlock and only if she attacks a specific opponent, and never the one that damage does the most work against. While Feywild gives our whole board combat-relevant abilities, supplies a wider board, and works regardless of which of your creatures are attacking which opponents. I don't need to tell you that's an improvement on every front. Wilson is already amazing in combat, and clearly spells Voltron, but what he's missing is a way to buff himself, and Colts the Absolute fills that role much better than any of the other similar backgrounds, earning its place as his most popular choice. So when you choose a background, it should always give you access to another color and fill a hole in your commander's game plan. Now, let's choose a background. Saravok wants enemy life low to be as large as possible and for enemies to not have permanence on their turns. Removal accomplishes a lot of these goals, particularly removal that can deal damage or grow Saravok. Noble Heritage and Raised by Giants are both great choices for this since both grow Saravok, give access to lots of removal and protection and additional growth effects. Lulu needs a lot of tapped creatures and needs something to leave the battlefield, likely either by flickering or by sacrifice. The two pairs I like most for this are Cloakwood Hermit and Haunted One, but in particular, I'm really drawn to a Celestia Aristocrats build. This gives you access to a lot of finishers and board protection, and I'm probably building it myself soon. Ellen Harbreeze wants to make a ton of tokens. What better background than Feywild Visitor paired with Flyers for an Azorius token strategy? Lazelle's game plan is missing a source of counters, and Master Chef really is the best choice for that, without a doubt. Shadowheart needs a supply of larger bodies, and both Dragon Cultist and Master Chef provide in abundance. Both strategies are ones I've had a lot of fun with, but it's debatable which is better. Abdel Adrian is just begging to be flickered, and Candlekeep Sage generates a crazy amount of card draw, definitely earning its place as most popular. But if you're looking for something new, I think Shameless Charlatan could give it a run for its money. Even when it becomes a copy of something else, Abdel's delayed triggered ability is still tracked, and no matter what he copies, it'll stay your commander so you can continue to use the ability. And since Abdel is canonically the player character from Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, it seems flavorful that you can customize him as a character. 
Palora's game plan is missing ways to supply combat damage abilities. And while Far Traveler does a lot to negate her downside, if you're looking for something new to try, I really think Popular Entertainer fills that hole in a way Far Traveler doesn't. Amber, of course, pairs really well with Veteran Soldier, as well as Encore and any other effects you can play from the graveyard. Bailoff Baratil was practically made for a raised by Giants group slug deck. Barakos provides mana, which is scariest when you have card draw like what Folk Hero provides for our party. Since Durnan is already casting creature spells from exile, Passionate Archaeologist will make sure they leave impact craters. Uranus and Gloom Stalker is missing ways to put lands in the graveyard, and Scion of Halister has that in spades, pairing exceptionally well with Gale Waterdeep Prodigy as well to continue to double spell for the length of the game. Ganax really needs help getting dragons into play. Both Feywild Visitor and Acolyte of Bahamut will do the trick, but for my money, I think an Izzet Dragonstorm build here works better. Gut True Soul Zealot needs things to sacrifice, and both Veteran Soldier and Glowwood Hermit are ready to provide, and both in colors that take ample advantage of the extra power boost. Imowen wants to be paired with a black background to be able to play with the most initiative cards, and I think Criminal Pass or Cults of the Absolute would be her best pairs in that regard, each build feeling remarkably unique. Shahira, like Halson, is missing only tokens, and while there are many that provide them, I think Fey Wild Visitor is going to serve our needs best, giving us another way to use all those Simic Tokens cards that people liked from the Strixhaven precons. Whether it's raced by Giants or Hardy Outlander, Livon wants to play a Gruul non-creatures deck to have access to the mana for, non for big non-creatures as well as the occasional creature that grows well. Rasad also wants a pair with initiative cards, but this time we have a built-in win condition if we have a high toughness evasion, so let's throw in blue with Dungeon Delver. Renari pairs well with Folk Hero and Acolyte of Bahamut, but if I were to build it, I think I like the Acolyte better for its mana reduction and mana pool to play these dragons. Sybaris wants to pair with Cloakwood Hermit, hands down. Val could pair with Raised by Giants, but Tavern Brawler would also be really interesting. And Skanos, of course, pairs well with Dragon Cultist. That's not nearly all of them, but hopefully this gives you a start on some ideas for new brews. If you found this helpful, smash the YouTube buttons, leave a comment, and consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Thanks for watching!